today's Brown Bag Webinar, Orientations for Standards Development Volunteers. My name is Barbette Howe. I'm NGWA's Webinar Coordinator. Feel free to type in your questions throughout the webinar for the presenter to address. She'll respond to them during Q&A. To ask a question, click on the question pod on your right, type in your question, and click on Send. Some questions may not be addressed due to time constraints. However, feel free to type in, feel free to email Lauren directly. At the end of this presentation, we'd appreciate it if you'll take a few moments to complete a brief evaluation. A window will open with it after we exit this meeting. Lauren Hutchison joined NGWA in 2012 as the Certification Coordinator and Industry Practice Administrator. She worked with volunteers to write best suggested practices and industry standards. A former web developer and project manager, Hutchison has more than 10 years of experience designing and leading projects from concept to completion. She earned her Bachelor of Journalism in Online Journalism from Ohio University in 2011 and has written for the Chautauqua Daily, Columbus Alive, and the University College at Ohio University. Without further ado, your presenter, Lauren Hutchison. Welcome, Lauren. Thanks, Barbette. Let me see if I can get this started. Can you see what I'm seeing? All right, here we go. Sorry for the delay. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, for this uh, orientation. And more importantly, thank you for joining. Um, thank you for volunteering to be part of the standards development process. Um, I am hoping that with today's webinar, uh, at the end of today's webinar, you'll have a better idea of what a standard is, just how we develop it. Um, you'll get an overview of what ANSI is. Uh, ANSI is the American National Standards Institute, and, and basically how um, their process is involved in our process in creating these standards. Uh, and you'll also learn about what benefits um, you receive and what your responsibilities are uh, when you are developing standards with NGWA. So first I'd like to talk about just what a standard is. There are, there are certainly some misconceptions about it. Um, our standards are a formal consensus written document. Um, they will be approved by ANSI, or rather the process that we use to create them is going to be approved by the American National Standards Institute. And I'll get into that in just a minute, too. Um, they are intended as performance standards that set industry benchmarks. Um, they are not like a, a technical specification or a how-to document but rather they uh, reflect the accepted processes and procedures and policies that are already happening within the industry. Uh, we, uh, we hope to release them um, not only to uh, kind of set those industry standards, but to uh, protect our uh, limited resources. Um, we uh, intend them to be used on a national scale, but we hope that they will be an example um, and used internationally as well. Uh, the standards are going to be most uh, applicable and, and most useful to industry professionals. So drilling and water systems contractors, scientists and engineers, uh, manufacturers and suppliers, but we also hope that they will be a reference for uh, regulatory agencies to create or uh, revise existing legislation at the federal, state, and local levels. Um, I, again, thank you for volunteering to be a part of this. As, as uh, you develop the standards, I think it's an opportunity to uh, give yourself a, a little bit more professional distinction, um, to also give back to the industry, uh, to preserve uh, the body of knowledge within the industry, and most importantly, to create standards uh, um, and elevate uh, the professional practice of groundwater professionals everywhere. Uh, the, uh, 
National Groundwater Association actually has several standards that we are working on in various stages of construction. Uh, I, I know many of you might have heard about the uh, water well construction standard. Um, it's intended to be to uh, to reflect the characteristics of a finished water well, and it's written for all different types of water wells and intended to be used in a lot of different locations. So uh, that, I think and hope, should be published and available towards the end of this year. Uh, we are also simultaneously working on the industry personnel standard, uh, which is basically um, a, a job task analysis of all the different professions within the groundwater industry. They, uh, they're written from a, a set of job task analysis that we did in 2000 with the Ohio State University um, and kind of fleshed out from there to include all the recommended skills and competencies that different um, roles within the groundwater industry uh, need to know before they perform their job. Um, once we finish up our well construction standard and uh, industry personnel standard, we'll start on our loop well construction standard. It's going to be very similar in its format and its scope to the well construction or water well construction standard. And it'll be based off of our uh, the published guidelines, which we've already written. So uh, I, I think that uh, as we continue to, as volunteers and at NGWA, uh, become more familiar with this process of developing standards, we'll, we'll start uh, seeing more and more of them and hopefully faster and faster. Um, the, uh, and I talked a little bit about the American National Standards they are a nonprofit organization um, that helps people uh, develop standards. Uh, our process for developing standards has been accredited by ANSI. Um, and they basically look at our process and make sure that uh, our policy developing the standards promote openness, balance, due process, transparency, and consensus. And there are several different ways that we as an organization do this. And I'll, I'll get into that in a little while. But, but generally, the idea is um, in developing a consensus-driven document, we are trying to be uh, pretty democratic about it uh, in using ANSI guidelines to do that. Within uh, developing the standards, we, uh, we have several different uh, groups of, of people who are involved in um, I'm, I'm guessing that most of the people involved in the webinar today are uh, part of a task group. And the task groups for each of our standards, be it the well construction standard or um, the industry personnel standard, they are experts in that, in that particular topic. So um, for uh, the personnel standard, if you are a well driller, you would be on the well driller task group. If you are a uh, groundwater scientists, you'd be on the groundwater scientist task group. So we've got several different ones all going at once. Um, but we also, within those groups, try to create them um, so that they have balance um, it, of academics versus um, you know, a, a manufacturer or a supplier or a regulator or uh, across the board regionally, too, so that we're not just focusing on one area of the country. Um, your work in the task groups is going to be reviewed by our Standards Development Oversight Committee. Um, that, those, that's comprised of people who uh, were on task groups before. And basically, they just want to take a look and make sure that everything that we're doing is kind of consistent. Because if you're working on one chapter, it may not, may not necessarily be in the same kind of format or, or the same kind of scope as another task group. So, they kind of pull it together, and they'll look at our work. Um, and uh, finally, uh, everything that we do before it is, is published or the public sees it, um, the NGWA board will have a look at that as well. Um, and we also involve the public as part of this process. And I'll, and I'll get into that in just a minute, too. But they have an opportunity to take a look at, at your work and see if there's um, you know, anything that might additional revision. So I'll explain. Um, this, is, this is kind of the heart of the presentation here, this, this 
this whole development process. Um, and I know it, it looks involved, but I can break it down um, into kind of two phases. First, we draft the standard. We actually write the text and, and uh, work with the different groups that I just identified to, to make sure that it's, it's uh, what everybody wants. And then in phase two, um, we will post the draft out for public comment and then uh, process those comments. So uh, within the first phase, first we have to decide that we want to write a standard. And that, ha that has its own process that usually the task groups aren't involved in. Um, but we, you know, we initiate the project through the project initiation of national standards, which you would pin the document to ANSI and say, we're going to write this, and here's who it affects, and here's what's in the document. Uh, once the board and ANSI uh, post that and that process is approved, um, they will elect to um, put some task groups together. And the task groups will begin working with me and with each other to start drafting the standard line by line. And I'll, and I'll get into a little bit how that works, too. Um, once the people on the task group have voted, um, and I'll get into that as well. But once you've kind of approved and you get to a good place where, um, where the document is, says what you want it to say, uh, we'll send it to the uh, SDO, the Standards Development Oversight Committee. And uh, they will either approve the draft or say, maybe you should take a look at this. Notice that a lot of these arrows are, are, are two-way. So there's definitely an opportunity for feedback. But usually, it's, it's, uh, it's always very reasonable and, and will strengthen the document. And it just uh, helps to improve the standard. Um, and once the SDO approves of the work, uh, we will send that to the NGWA board uh, to, to approve of the draft. And then uh, we will move into uh, the public comment phase, which lasts 30 days. And I'm responsible for gathering all of those comments and making sure that they make sense um, and, and contacting the commenters, even in some cases, and saying, well, what exactly do you want us to do with this? Um, and getting some exact text that they'd want to put in. Um, and then the task group will reconvene and respond to those comments. Um, and you are fully within your power as a task group to look at a comment and say, no. This, we're not going to do this, and uh, this, you know, this is not persuasive. But we do want to come up with a response, at least, for each comment, um, and make sure that, uh, that, that each one has been addressed in some way. Uh, once, and, and maybe the comment is persuasive, um, and that gives you the opportunity to uh, take another look at it and say, well, maybe we should include this. Um, and once, once the revisions and responses from that uh, public review um, have been completed by the task groups, we'll send the, um, our revised uh, standard back to the SDO to approve of uh, the document uh, one more time and, and all the uh, responses to the comments. Um, once the uh, SDO has uh, approved of each section, each and every section in the standard, uh, we will send that to uh, NGWA's board for their final approval and also announce to ANSI uh, the board, their board of standards review. Um, and then they will take a look at our process and make sure that our voting was fair and our task groups were fairly set up based on the, um, based on the principles that I had outlined earlier and also based on our own published policies. So I know it seems like a really involved process, but um, to break it down uh, for the task group members, here is, is what you're responsible for. First, um, we need a release form from the people working on the standard. Uh, if you haven't done that, I will be sending those out shortly. Um, I anticipate that uh, we will have two to four web meetings in each phase, so two to four to draft and two to four to take a look at the public comments. Those calls are not going to be longer than 90 minutes each. Um, I hold them using GoToMeeting. You can dial in with your cell phone if you're on the road. You don't have to use it, uh, the, the web client. But if you do, you can see what's on my screen in the same way that you're looking at it right now. So if you're on this webinar, you already have all the computer skills you need to be a part of this. 
um, during those web meetings, we will um, task group members will suggest or actually uh, write the the text line for line. Um, that will go in the standard, and uh, and and I can talk a little bit about how that works too. Um, and and for the people who were on the calls, or maybe you weren't able to be on the calls, um, it's important that everybody involved in the task group just takes a look at the document as as it goes along. And I'll keep out sending out new and new versions, so you can uh, make sure that it's it's in line with uh, what the industry practices are. Um, and you also need to vote, um, either a, a formal uh, electronically submitted ballot or an email, um, when we get to a point where everybody agrees that this is good, we need to vote on it. And that's also an opportunity to say, well, we need to continue to work on this. Um, and we've talked a lot about uh, the standards, how they are developed as a consensus-driven document. And here's how we establish consensus and what we try to do to make sure that everybody is included and our process is fair. Um, the uh, meetings uh, require at least three task group members in order to proceed. Um, I, uh, we try to make the task groups um, as diverse as possible, as I had mentioned before, to, to balance different interests within whatever topic we're, we're working with. Uh, I try to get full participation. I know it's challenging because you're volunteering your hours, but uh, I work with everybody, or I, I do my best to work with everybody to get a time that works for all, everyone, um, coast to coast. Um, we are, Our meetings are also open, so if you can't go to one, but you think your colleague would be a good fit, um, you, you could forward the meeting invitation to them. Um, however, our voting process is closed to just the people who are appointed on the task. Um, so uh, each company gets one vote. Uh, we, uh, we also make an effort to resolve any disputes, any, um, any disputes that come up during that process. Uh, and if for some reason we get to a point where we're voting and, and things are still contentious, there's also an appeals process. And that's both for the people working on the standard and also for the people, um, the, the public who's commented on, on the standard as well. And the uh, NGWA and the SDO uh, will, will head that appeals process. So I know that everybody's kind of anxious to take a look at the standard, just what is it? And this looks different than what the personal standard, personnel standard looks like. But this is just an example of the uh, water well construction standard. This is one section, well site selection. So the task group will begin writing this. And you can see this text that's in red and underlined is new, new text that I'm writing on the screen while you're on the call. And this text that's crossed out is text that we've deleted while during the call. So you can see the revisions as they're happening. And uh, once the task group approves of this, uh, the SDO will uh, take a look at it as well and make a comment. In this case, the chair said, well, why do we want desired and potential water quality? Maybe it should just be desired water quality. We can't say anything about potential. Um, and uh, sent this back to the task group for another review. The task group took a look at this and said, well, OK, that's, uh, that's fair. I mean, we don't want to talk about potential water quality within a, a formal standard here. Um, so this is what they've submitted for public review. And the public review, uh, I gather all these comments. There are different colors here. And we look at the, the comment text. And this paragraph here is, is the response that we kind of crafted together as a group. And again, you know, they can be persuasive or non-persuasive. Um, in this case, uh, this, this, this comment was persuasive. So we added some text that says, in accordance with the local jurisdiction requirements. Um, and uh, sent that back to the SDO for more review. Um, they actually took that in that text out in, in accordance with your local jurisdiction requirements because uh, the task group working on this particular section uh, wasn't aware that we would already had a disclaimer at the very beginning of the document saying basically you need to follow the law uh, for your local jurisdiction. If we put that in the standard, it'd be on almost 
every other line. So it didn't need to be in there, and the task group agreed, and the SBO agreed, and uh, we, everybody voted and said yes, and this is the final section of the standard. Um, so once everybody votes, uh, any, anything that's still unresolved, uh, we will address in appeals with uh, the SBO and with myself. Um, and uh, once it's approved by the board, we'll send it to the Board of Standards Review at ANSI, and they'll take a look at our process only, not the technical content of the document. Um, once ANSI approves of it, uh, the standard will be on sale at the NGWA bookstore for everyone to use. Um, and if you need some more detailed information on just what our policies are or just what ANSI's policies are, um, I've included some resources here for, for your additional research. So we've got our own policy, um, a nice one-sheet one PDF of uh, the key steps that uh, all standards development developers use from, from ANSI here. And uh, just what, how ANSI defines due process and, and what, what that is. Um, so I, I guess at this time I'd uh, like to open it back up to uh, questions. From, uh, from, from our volunteers. Barbette, have you, uh, have you received any? I have not received any questions at this moment. All right. Barbette, did you have any questions? <laughs> hmm. I'm sorry, I, maybe I missed it. How long does this process normally take for them to review a document? Well, um, a web meeting is, is going to take no more than 90 minutes. and Usually they run about that. But in terms of uh, the overall process, uh, we mm -hmm. haven't completed our first standard yet. So um, I, I don't think it's really fair for me to say just how long that might take. Uh, okay. I, the personnel standard has actually been pretty zippy so far. Um, I, I think it's been six months um, in the draft oh. of the standard. We're almost to a point where we're going to, um, to release that for public comment. But I really think it's going to, like the second phase will go a lot faster um, in reviewing the public comments. Uh, on the well construction standard, um, the, uh, reviewing all the comments uh, took about um, a, a month for me and for the task group members, maybe one or two calls for each for each section. So um, it's a it's it's a bigger task for me than it is for the people in the task group, um, since we have so many different sections all kind of going at the same time. Um, but I, I anticipate that things are going to get smoother as we as we get better at doing this. Okay, looks like we do have a few questions. Are you able to see them, Lauren? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I have a question that says, is there any additional review needed beyond the public comment period? Oh, well, here's the thing. Um, the standards, even when we publish them, uh, ANSI wants us to go back and review them periodically. So this is kind of a living document. We, we try and get it right the first time, obviously, as much as we possibly can. Um, but there, there is an opportunity to go back and revise this. And especially as technology changes, we're going to need to. Um, so uh, yeah, there's, there's an opportunity to do that. I, I hope that answered your question. And if not, please go ahead and ask some follow-up questions. Uh, I have another question that says, uh, the group calls for our standard development were generally monthly or less frequent. Is that by design, or is it because the team members are not available? Um, it's generally due to availability. Um, but it can also be because I'm running several different task groups kind of concurrently. Um, I, I think that what I want to do going forward and as much as possible, uh, and this worked really well with some of the uh, public comments that we did in water well construction, is 
if we know we've got a lot to get through, maybe I'll set them up uh, once or twice a week so that we can kind of get a momentum um, and, and keep everybody uh, fresh within that process. So it's not really by design. It, it has been by availability. I have another question that says, uh, uh, another question says, are there ever any issues with content and agreement on that content? Um, yes, there, there are. But generally, uh, it, it's usually, um, usually it's, it's people who are trying to get the same end result and want to do it in two different ways. So um, generally, we've been able to work that out very well. Um, you get to a point where you realize that your intentions are the same. Um, and we work together to try and find the best way to say it. So it can be challenging, but generally, we are all on the same page about what should go in the If there are any more questions, I would be happy to answer them. Are there any follow-up questions? What I've already said. Um, I did want to make mention it's not necessary to have a microphone. You just need your office telephone or, as Lauren suggested, a cell phone while you're within this platform having the meeting. So a microphone is not necessary. Okay. Well, if there's any questions, please do type them in at this moment. Okay. Doesn't look like we have any additional questions. Um, Lauren's contact information will be in the handout you'll receive. She's also going to allow you to have access to the recording if you just want to view it at your leisure. Um, Lauren, we appreciate you taking the time to share this information today. Yes, thank, thank you all. Thanks again very much. This, this process has been really interesting and, and neat to be a part of. And I, I am constantly astonished by how much work we can get done and how cooperative all the volunteers have been. So um, thank you again. And I, I look forward to working with you. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for attending orientation for standards development volunteers. Have a wonderful day. We appreciate it if you take a moment to complete the brief evaluation. This concludes our presentation. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.